It started off as an exciting day for David Mwangi. He arrived early at last week's protest, armed only with a water bottle and a face mask. The mood was cheerful, he says. I was taking selfies with the police and chanting peace, but then the mood changed. The person next to me was shot. People started shouting, get to the ground. I started running. Then I heard a bang and I was hit. The bullet went right through his leg. Now in hospital, he's waiting for a second operation. David Mwangi counts himself lucky. The protester next to him was shot in the head and later died. He doesn't regret taking part in the protest. He says he's fed up with the government because of its corruption and nepotism. Kenya has a lot of problems. Our education system is broken. It's not what you know, but who you know. Look at me. I graduated from university, and now I've been reduced to driving taxis, and the police still harasses me. He graduated with a geography degree three years ago, but hasn't been able to find a job. It's a fate shared by many. 67% of Kenya's young people are unemployed. He did temporary work until his mother took out a loan to buy him a motorbike, so he could work as a motor taxi driver. We just have to survive in this life. Even if you follow the rules, you still suffer. 19-year-old Ibrahim Kamau attended the same demo as David, but he never returned home. His mother says he was about to start college and was known for standing up for the less privileged. He loved to fight for people's rights. He couldn't stand seeing people being oppressed. Ibrahim Kamau's family wanted to hold a remembrance ceremony for him and other killed protesters, but were forced to change the location. Police cordoned off the area early in the morning, fearing protests. Outside the hospital, this group of young people are also at risk of being dispersed by the police. They've spontaneously mobilized a crowd via social media in support of the injured protesters. We are here to donate blood to help some of our fellow youth who are injured. And we heard there is no enough blood, so we have come to help. The protest has changed from being about the cost of living crisis and against a tax bill to demanding justice and accountability for those killed during last week's deadly demonstrations. And the protesters want President William Ruto to resign. We are not fearing. If uh, even a thousand of us die, eh, there will be more to come. And we must remove that guy from that office. Inside the hospital, David Mwangi is concerned about how he'll support his family if he can't work. But like the protesters, he remains determined. You know, to ride a motorbike, you need your legs. I'll just have to deal with it. I will get better. I will get better.